Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yasser Ahmed. So in this video, we will continue with ICT applications, chapter six from the ICT IGCC course. So please check out the previous videos. We've um, already covered three parts of this chapter. This is now the fourth uh, video. So we're now going to be looking at computers in the retail industry. Uh, let me zoom in on this slide here and show you uh, in a little bit of detail what we're going to be talking about. So we're looking at um, electronic fund transfer points of sale. And this is when a customer will use either a credit or debit card to complete a transaction. So let's say, for example, we've gone to the grocery store, we picked up some um, groceries, milk, elk, eggs, bread, and we want to go ahead and pay. Um, so we're going to be looking at the process and that take that's carried out when we do use a credit or debit card at the point of sale. So point of sale is basically at the till. Now remember guys, um, if you are using your credit or debit card, um, you can either tap it, okay, using the contactless method, if you're making a smaller payment, okay, there's no uh, authentication required, you simply tap the card and then the payment is processed. Or we can use chip and pin reader, so where the card is entered into a chip and pin reader, you enter a pin, if that's correct, then we can obviously process the sale. So in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to use a chip and pin reader. So if you're paying for your goods, um, the customer will give the bank card to the cashier at the point of sale, or they will insert their card into the chip and pin reader. Then either the cashier or the customer enters the card into the chip and pin reader, as I just mentioned, and the cashier will confirm the value of the purchase. So for example, they will say 55 pounds, okay, before you go ahead and make the payment. So the first step from the customer, once the card has been entered into, into the chip and pin reader, is to enter their pin, okay? So it's normally a four digit pin. If the pin matches the pin stored on a chip, then the transaction can continue. Um, Obviously, if you enter the incorrect PIN, if you're using a chip and PIN method, then you may be prompted to enter the PIN again. Um, if you enter the PIN wrong on a number of attempts, then your transaction may be declined. Also, um, the PIN entered has to be correct for the transaction to continue, so we mentioned that. The card will also be checked if it's still valid, so it's not expired, it's not blocked or not stolen. If the card is valid and the chip or so the pin entered is correct, then we can continue. So the shop's computer, where you're buying the groceries from, will use account details on the chip to connect to the customer's bank account and check the balance. Okay, so the amount is, what did I say, 55 pounds? Okay, so we're checking for the shop's bank, will check the customer's bank for the amount of 55 pounds. If funds are sufficient, then a transaction will be approved. Okay, so the funds from the customer's account will be transferred electronically to the shop's bank account. However, if funds are not available, a decline message will be sent to the store's computer and a cashier will then request another method of payment. But let's say, for example, we've got the right amount. The purchase amount is subtracted from the customer's account and then deposited into the shop's bank account. Once the transaction is complete, uh, the receipt will be printed and the cashier will be given the card and the receipt, so the cashier will then give the card and the receipt to the customer. So there's two processing um, elements that take place. First, we check in, we see if the pin's correct, if the card is still valid. The second thing is we're checking for the funds. Um, and obviously, if we have the right uh, amount of funds, then we can transfer from customer to the shop's bank account. If not, then the transaction will be declined. Right. Let's move ahead. So this is obviously the point of sale. Um, this is a chip and pin reader. So either the customer or the cashier will insert the card into the chip and pin reader, and then you just need to enter your pin to authenticate, authenticate your card. If you're making a lower payment, obviously you can tap. The same processes will take place. The card will be checked to see if it's valid. And then the same process will be taking place to check if funds are available. Okay. We also have automatic um, stock control systems um, in shops as well. So the point of sale is the place where a transaction takes place. Customers can pay by cash or use their debit credit cards. 
and stock control systems can automatically update stock records when items are purchased at the point of sale. So let's have a look at this example here. So let's say um, at the start of the day, there's 10 cans of beans in stock, okay? And you're the first customer going into the shop. You picked up six cans of beans. So every time we scan, the cashier scans in a can of beans, um, what will happen is it's going to be deducted. So six cans purchased, when goods are sold at the point of sale, the stock control system is automatically updated. So we had 10, we've purchased six. So obviously we minus uh, six cans and now the current stock level is going to be four. We then have a preset, okay? So for example, if a stock item falls below a certain value. So in this case here, if a stock falls below five, which is the preset, then in the next order, we will automatically reorder 10 more cans of beans, okay? And the supplier's address details are stored in the database. So then in the next delivery, and the supplier sends um, 10 more cans of beans. Obviously, if this is real life, it's not gonna be 10 cans of beans, it might be 50 or 100, depending on, on the size of the shop. And once the items arrive, the stock control system will automatically update the stock levels, adding the delivered goods. Um, so basically, the, uh, I'm not sure why I got that. Okay, so four plus the 10. Um, ideally, you don't want to go get down to your last five cans of beans. You want to have like a higher preset, for example. So if you get to your last 20 cans of beans, then a request is automatically sent on the next delivery, which may be every half an hour or every hour or maybe two times in a day. Uh, every time the delivery comes, this item will be automatically included. So at the POS, guys, every time you purchase something, it's deducted from the stock control. Uh, once it falls below a certain preset, an automatic request is sent to the suppliers. And in the next delivery, um, X amount of that item is delivered and the stock control system is automatically updated. Right, guys. So let's now look at internet shopping. So internet shopping is becoming more popular to use this due to the development of the internet and the advancement of mobile internet technology. Um, so let's look at the um, advantages and disadvantages to the customer. So Amazon right now is very popular. Um, doing your online shopping, um, groceries being delivered to your home is very popular as well. So the advantage to internet shopping, online shopping is internet is now available on more platforms, including applications on your phones and tablets. So now shops will have apps which you can uh, log into and then you can obviously purchase your items. Um, internet can be accessed 24 seven, so there's no need to travel as well. It saves money on uh, traveling and parking. It saves time because we're not having to travel, we're not having to queue. Um, and if it was online banking, obviously you queue in the banks as well. And you may have access to a wider range of goods over the internet. And uh, it's useful for individuals who find it difficult to travel and goods can be delivered to your home. So let's say you're elderly and you find it difficult, you don't have the means to travel or you can't hold too many bags at the same time. So it might be more convenient for the items to be delivered to your home. And because uh, food can be delivered, groceries can be delivered, you can spend your time doing something else, other leisure activities. However, let's look at the disadvantages to the customer. Online accounts could be hacked, car details could be stolen. You need an internet connection and you need to be computer literate. Um, if you're just sitting at home, maybe it's a lack of socializing or exercising. Some people like to go shopping malls just to stretch their legs or to bump into people and just have conversations. Um, you cannot see the goods before you buy. Um, for example, if you're trying to, if you're purchasing clothes, maybe you wanna try it see if it fits before you buy it, or maybe you want to buy some fruit, you want to check the condition uh, before you purchase. And there may be delays in delivery as well. And the effect on the company, so if, we have a, if a shop has an online presence, less retail outlets are required, which means no rent or utility costs. And this can also apply to online banking. Less staff required in the retail outlets. However, specialist staff would have to be employed to maintain a website and run a dispatchment department. So for deliveries, uh, you'd have an online presence, which would attract more customers, maybe a global customer base. And uh, however, you would basically lose that interaction with your customers. So lack of customer interaction. So here is a typical exam question. So Tuara Retail is an online store 
and this online store does not have a physical shop. Um, customers buy products from this store using internet shopping. So describe the advantage to, to our retail. So we're not talking about the customers, we're talking to, about the shop of, in, of offering internet shopping. So to our retail will have, with, that makes no sense, to our retail with an online presence would have an international customer base. Actually, it does make sense if we finish reading it. They could target prices, products, and services as specific groups based on buying um, data. Or cookies as well could be used to target uh, potential items to customers based on what they've been looking at. Overheads would be reduced as less staff are required and rent for physical shops would not be required. It would also be cheaper to publicize special offers online rather than mail or printing off newsletters to be delivered to people's homes. Uh, another question, discuss the advantage and disadvantage to customers now of using internet banking rather than visiting a bank. So make sure you know the difference between if the question is asking about the company, the online shop or the online bank or the customer. So for the customer, the customer can use internet banking 24 seven. This would reduce the number of journeys to and from the bank. The customer saves money as no traveling to the bank is required. So maybe on petrol or, you know, parking, you may need to pay for parking. Also reduces the time wasted traveling to the bank and waiting in queues. In addition, less chance of physical robberies. Okay, so you're not going to the cash point or to the bank to, uh, you know, take out money or to transfer money. So that reduces the risk of physical robberies. However, security could be an issue as transactions are carried out over the internet. It could be a more risk to farm and efficient fraud. Physical money cannot be deposited or withdrawn, and you're reliable uh, or reliant on a reliable, I think, internet connection. Yeah. Okay, let me just see. Um, whoops, let me go back. Okay. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to st stop the video here and you can join me in the next part where we look at 6.11 satellite systems. So we'll come to the end of this part for now. Uh, please drop your comments below, like and share. Please subscribe and share these um, resources with your friends. Um, hopefully they are helpful. And I look to forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.